In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And, with your spirit. and today we celebrate the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord. And so our Lord shows what it looks like in his divinity. Uh, we want to welcome everybody. This is St. Francis Xavier Parish. My name is Father Jim Tremp. I'm the pastor here, assisted by Deacon uh, Todd Herder. And so we welcome everybody as we gather here, especially our homebound that will be watching us as well. My dear brothers and sisters of Christ, as we always do, we know that in baptism, there's a connection today with baptism, all sins are forgiven. But we know that we do sin after baptism. So let's prepare ourselves by asking the Lord for his pardon, forgiveness, mercy, and compassion. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witnesses of the fathers, and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship, grant, we pray to your servants, that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co heirs with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was snow bright, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire, with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened, and the books were opened. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the Ancient One and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory. This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess the prophetic message that is altogether reliable. You will do well to be attentive to it, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody that knows me knows I'm deathly afraid of heights. And back in 2009, I was on sabbatical, and I was in the Holy Land. And we went up to Mount Tabor, where the Transfiguration took place. And there's only one way up. Well, I guess you could walk it, but they, these are like hairpin curves going up. And you're not able to drive your own cars. They have like these minivans uh, that you have to take. And I'm in there, and I am just sweating profusely. And there was another priest right next to me, and I think he was sweating more than I was. And he went at one time, and he went to grab my legs. And I reached over and I says, you know, Father Joseph, I go, as this bus goes over, it's each, per, each man for himself. I don't think holding on to my leg is going to save you. We finally got up to the church and I was the presider. So this feast has a special meaning for me because I was the presider up there with brother priests at the Church of the Transfiguration. And I remember how I started the Mass after I made the sign of the cross. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen and welcome. I said, welcome to my new home because I went up this mountain scared, and I go, there's no way I'm going to go back down. I'm just going to make this my home. And 
Well, here I am. I knew eventually he made it down. But Jesus went up a Mount Tabor with Peter, James, and John. Peter was always the first pope. His name is the first pope. His name always comes first. And who name normally always comes second? James. James, a couple of them there. So he took Peter, James, and John. We hear some things. It says that he was transfigured. And technically the word trans means like the crossover, and figure is what a figure what a thing is. So there was a change. Now, Jesus was completely human. He was like completely like us. He was like us in all things but sin. He had flesh, he had blood, he had pain, but he was all completely God. And we see for a moment what a couple things happened. He says that his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. So Jesus took on that divine form. He's completely human, but he's completely God, divine. And those three apostles were there witnessing that. They couldn't completely describe it, so they just had to describe it as like light and sun. But there's also something for us, because they said it was also good for us to be here. And we hear about Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets. And so we hear the idea then of, of building the tents, but what's interesting about here is then we hear the voice, right? It says, uh, then, um, when he was still speaking, a bright light a cl cloud cast a shadow over them, and from the cloud came a voice that said, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. So when else, what other time did that happen? The baptism. You had the voice of the Father, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. So we have a connection between Jesus' divinity and our baptism. Now, I baptized most of you. And so when we're baptized, our soul is pure. But as we get older, now if your dad was here, Macy, I'd be picking on your dad right now, right? Because as we get older, we have sin. And so we have this connection that we have here. And so... We have two things that are happening. We have the connection in our baptism and the forgiveness of sins in the divinity of Christ. But then he says, rise and do not be afraid. And so as we gather here today, as we continue our work on our relationship with the Lord, it always comes down to the very basics. Are we worshiping each week? Jesus went up to the mountain to worship. Are they spending time in prayer? Are we truly living our lives the way we could? And are we celebrating the sacraments? And if we do, we too will have the divine glory that was shown to the apostles that day. And that's good news. You got my spidey shoes on? Let's profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and a life for the world to come. Amen. And we now bring our petitions and our intercessions before the Lord. For all Christian people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, for those who hold public office, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those who are not able to attend Mass at their parish church, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all who call upon Christ in faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord For the intentions submitted by our viewers at home, we pray to the Lord. Lord 
We also pray for all of our deceased loved ones. We pray for the intention of this Mass for Todd Marciniak and for all those who have died, that they be with our God in heaven. We pray to the Lord. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray now, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And sanctify, O Lord, we pray, these offerings here we celebrate, the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendor, cleanse us from the stains of sin through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for he revealed his glory in the presence of his chosen witnesses, and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily form, which he shares with all humanity that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples, and that he might show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what is so wonderfully shown forth first in its head. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. O Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by saying your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion. He took bread. Giving you thanks and praise, he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was done, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice in my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, 
and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters that all have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be called to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And for for the the kingdom, kingdom, the the power, power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. And Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed, and may the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already in my heart and unite myself to you completely. Please do not let me ever be separated from you. Amen.
May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. St. Michael, Michael, the Archangel, Archangel defend, defend us in battle. Be our defense, defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray. And to all the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, rest in the hell Satan and all evil spirits who power about the world, seeking to ruin of souls. Amen. Hi everybody, Bishop Callahan here. Welcome as we gather together to celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. I am so happy that you have joined us and I continue to pray with you and with all the members of our diocese as we pray for the sick and we pray for your families and your friends. God bless you and thank you for your support of the Sunday Mass. <laughs>